Well, nothing ever seems to surprise me. Welcome back. I've almost got this door finished here. Let me zoom you back out. I just had to put a little wipe on the bottom, which I hate not wiping the whole thing, but the rest of it's perfect. And I just couldn't seem to get this bottom edge the way I wanted it. So I decided to tear into this dog leg. And like I said, nothing ever surprises me. This is a six year old vehicle and look at the amount of rust down in that panel. And guess what? There's more foam. So I've got a new panel here. You see it sitting on the floor and it will cover a pretty substantial area. In fact, it won't cover all of my damage. I did pull some of it out um, pretty good. I think I showed that in some previous videos, but uh, that panel will cover into here and it'll go all the way into the door. It's basically the whole thing all the way down. So we're gonna do some exploring here. Um, I was really gonna try and stay below this body line if I could. It looks bad over here, but again, I'm not sure what I'm gonna get into when I start peeling this foam out. I think a lot of that rust was on the back of this, but I'm trying to stay away from the door jam. I don't wanna get into the jam. I don't wanna replace it all the way in here. I wanna stay outside. But if it's bad enough, I'll go inside. So I'll bring you back after I cut this open and you can see how far the rust went after just seeing those two bubbles. All right, I was gonna show you where the extent of the rust was on this, but I kind of got carried away and got on a roll. Um, the long and short of it, let me see, I might need to get a light so you guys can see what's happening here. So let's take a peek. I got the panel tacked in there. Um, I've got several little tacks and I've got my welding blanket up clipped against the door here so I don't get any um, welding splatter on the door or burn the paint. So uh, long story short, seems like one of my famous lines. Oh, let's see if I can see. Well, Let's see, this piece right here, I actually put this piece in because this little tab here is where the plastic rocker cover goes and it was about ready to rot completely off. So I went ahead and just put a panel in there and you can see I kind of cut the seam sealer off with the razor blade. You just score it and put a screwdriver underneath it and pop it because as you can maybe tell right there, that's not rusty under there. That's just uh, factory corrosion protection on there. So we're gonna leave that. And what we're gonna do after we weld all my seams up, I got kind of a nasty gap here. So hopefully we can get that one welded. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put epoxy on all this bare steel. Um, this has got some surface rust on it over here I gotta work on but I'll epoxy all this and then seam seal both of those with two part seam sealer. Um, in a perfect world, you would section in the bottom of this rocker, but it's still solid back here. And I don't want to open up a can of worms. It's not terribly bad. Um, try and get it for longevity and the appearance on the outside here by doing it what we did. But you can see maybe, uh, you can see the rusty piece of metal on top of my new little uh, angled down piece there. That was the old one and it's in pretty bad shape. Um, I'm gonna cut it the rest of the way off and clean it the best I can. It's There's three or four panels that all come together right there. So if there's rust in between all that, there's just nothing I can do about it without disassembling it. And that's that's really not what this job's about. So what I'll do is clean it up and get a bunch of epoxy down in there the best I can. And uh, we'll seam seal that up. Um, one thing I noticed on the factory quarter panel, 
where this comes together down here, maybe that's too much light. There's see, there's a gap. There, the factory ones like this too, and there's no seam sealer in it from the factory. So I don't know what they were thinking, but I'm guessing that's where the water intrusion was. So I will seam seal all of that. Um, the other thing, we got kind of a, you can see the inner panel right here. This doesn't quite cover it. The factory one actually has this flange gets wider as it comes to the bottom. And this is aftermarket. So this is, this is the way this one goes. Um, I, I suppose you could wipe a little seam sealer on this edge. I'd rather uh, try and dribble epoxy in this edge before I do anything just to get some uh, corrosion protection on it. And it does have weld through primer on it, which uh, a lot of guys say it doesn't really do anything. And it, it may or may not, but it's standard procedure for collision. So um, that's the way we're doing it. So that's kind of where it's at for right now. Um, it's getting late in the day, so I'm gonna hang around for another hour and maybe get on to the front bumper that I've sanded some because if anything caught on fire in here, um, I wanna know about it. I picked all that foam out probably, oh, let's see, probably back to about there. So past this corner, and uh, I kind of went down in here. I could reach probably about six or eight inches away and pick it out. And then the foam sort starts to uh, end back in there. So whatever was left, I took the blow gun and tried to blow it down the rocker a little bit to get it away from this. And uh, it's really pretty clean in there. So we're in good shape. There's some of that foam down there on the floor laying underneath the vehicle. I didn't sweep up real good, but uh, there was probably a fist sized blob in there. And it was almost like great stuff foam. I mean, it broke out of there really easy. Some of those foams are real rubbery and they don't come out easy. But moving on to this, I basically gone over it where we had the deep gouges into it, went over that with 400. That's all I've gone over this with. And I won't get any more aggressive than the 400 grit. Um, if there's anything that's gouged into the plastic, I'll wipe it with some, uh, bumper repair adhesive not the stuff that comes in the gun but it's actually comes like a uh, blazing putty but it's called polyflex it's um evercoat makes it and it seems like crap but some of these just aren't going to come out i mean you can maybe see if it'll focus there's still a little chip in that one and a couple of the other ones but we'll get that all sanded down with 400 and I'll bring you back when we're working on the uh, filler work and finishing up the welds so you guys can see what that looks like. All right, so I hope you guys are all having a good day. We'll bring you back in a bit. All right, I think in the last clip I had that patch panel tacked in there. It's all in now. It's all welded up. Welds are dressed back as far as I want to take them. Uh, it's plenty low over the weld zone. And I don't know if you can see how sort of a dull gray it is there. I did sandblast in there just to check for pinholes and all that, make sure everything was good. So that's it, it fits good. The body line's where it needs to be. So I got it plug welded here on the inside. That's all got weld through primer behind it. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, Put a coat of fiberglass filler on there, short strand, and I'll show you what I got here. I'll get that wiped on and uh, get some body work going here. This is uh, Z Chrome Z Glass, and that's what we got there. So I'm gonna get that mixed up and uh, we'll get you back when it's time to throw it on the panel. That's about the best angle I can get for you folks, so I'll go ahead and get it wiped in there. This whole panel has minimum of an 80 grit scratch on it. Sometimes, uh, like right up around the welds, it has closer to a uh, 36 to 40 grit scratch. Now, the only place I want this fiberglass is over all these welds. 
because we're going to use lightweight filler to fill everything else. Now inevitably you're going to get it all over the panel, but especially trying to work in a tight area like this, press it in tight over those welds. So once I sand this back, there's going to be almost no filler on this. Now I kind of will point out a mistake I made. I sectioned this panel too close and I'm probably going to end up taking the door off. I don't know. Like I said, most of this is coming right back off. This is just kind of one of the last steps of reassurance that uh, any pinholes that may exist are filled. It drew a pretty decent low spot in right up against that weld zone. And that's good because I'd rather have that full of fiberglass but there is a little bit of a body line right in this dip and that's kind of where I sectioned it which again that's bad on me I got in a hurry so it's going to take a little bit of monkeying around to get it where I want it but it is what it is I can't change that now it's the panel is already in there so it's just a little bit of extra work One nice thing I found about this particular fiberglass, if you put the proper amount of hardener in it, it gives you quite a nice working time. Just get a little bit of fiberglass over those plug welds, which I know you guys can't see that, but you got the idea. Reason to wear rubber gloves. There's little areas down here, they're really hard to get into. And that's it. So we're going to let this kick off. I'll grind it back and we should be good to go with some regular lightweight filler. So I'll bring you back when it's time for that filler so you can see how much of it I took back out. Alright, there you go. You can kind of see what fiberglass filler is left and it's mostly covering this weld zone here, the weld zone here, and going down. And it was sunken in a little bit so there's probably a little more filler on there than if we had a uh, repair that was maybe a little bit easier to get to but that one is so tight to the door it's just 
Just a pain, that's all. Trying to get that metal finished. There wasn't uh, wasn't a whole lot happening. There's not a lot of real estate there. So you're going to notice that pretty much two thirds of this panel will probably have some sort of filler over it, just so I have some areas to blend that filler out. I'm going to do it in stages. I'm not going to wipe this bottom just yet. I'm only going to, I'd say, wipe the flat areas first the best I can. switch to a smaller spreader. This is just a four inch spreader that I've cut down to a little bit more manageable size for these tight areas like this. Yeah, we'll go ahead and try and wipe this. I may regret it. This will probably take me three wipes to get it straight. There's too many, uh, too many body lines going on in this one little area. I guess I could have sectioned this panel into the door and not fought with any of the body lines, but it is what it is now, right? Just be a little bit more difficult, that's all. say it but I might be dragging this stuff already to that sanded paint and once I start blocking it we'll know roughly how straight this is This first blocking, I'll do 85% of it with the DA. I won't even attempt to hand block it. So we can get all the filler into the lows. We'll block a bunch of it back out. Sometimes it's hard to see what you're working with. too too bad I think we're gonna yeah that's starting to get gummy so I'll bring you back when I get this blocked out so you can see what the repair looks like 